Coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your fifth libgdx tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be learning about two useful classes the vector 2 and the rectangle class. Now one thing I should have pointed out to you in the previous tutorials which you've probably already figured out if you've gotten this far is that IntelliJ automatically imported my classes for me but your IDE might not do that. Like Eclipse might give you a warning and it, and uh, you have to import these yourself in order to get the functionality. I should have let you know before but uh, hopefully you guys didn't have too many problems figuring that out. Um, if I, I'm going to try to remember to put up an annotation in my first tutorial but if I don't then remind me to my first or second tutorial. Um, so yeah, we're going to learn about the Vector2 class. So let's just say, okay, we have our text region. We have, um, um, and we can, we can get, we, we can't, we can get the region's X position, but we can't, well, yeah, we, well, we can get the X and Y position in the text region, but let's just say we wanted to calculate, we want to keep track of it with our own variables. So we have float and X and Y, and then we can get the X and the Y from the text region and we can do certain things with it. Well, what if I told you there was a way to store two uh, an x and y variable under one variable name? Well, we have something called the vector2 class, and there's a vector3 to handle uh, three variables, but we're only talking about two dimensions, and this is what we're mainly going to be using a vector4. So we're going to call this position, and we're just going to set our position to... Uh, we're going to set a new vector2, and we're just going to set to 0, 0. So just like that, if we want to access the x coordinate and set it to a new value or whatever, or just to get the x coordinate, we got it right there, and we can get the y coordinate like so. So we have the x and y under one variable name, which is very convenient. Now what we're going to do is there's, there's other functionality that it has, and we're not going to go through all the functionality, uh, but I'm just going to show you some of the uh, one of the cool methods that it does contain. So I'm just going to say new vector 2 and I'm just going to put 100, 100. And uh, what it contains is that it has a distance, um, it has a distance method which would calculate the distance between two vectors. So you can have, say you have a player and an enemy, you can see the distance between them. And if there's a certain distance between each other, they've collided. Or if there's a certain distance between each other, your attack can hit them. Or if the bullet is a certain distance from the player, it attacks the player or... I don't know you can do a lot of different things with the distance thing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say sprite bat or oh, sorry we're gonna say font dot draw and we take a sprite batch now this takes a string so we're just gonna say string value of uh, we're gonna say position dot DST for distance position 2 and then we're gonna put the we're just gonna put the write it at position zero zero so if we were to run this program as you can see we get the distance between both of uh, from one vector to the other vector and there's a lot of different formulas that you can actually use I like to divide and multiply and certain stuff that you could do with the vectors uh, um, I'm challenging you guys to check it out you know what just have some fun with it um, and so after that, we have the rectangle class. And the rectangle class takes in uh, four coordinates for the rectangle. And so let me, let me just calm this out for now. So whenever we create a new rectangle, let's create a new rectangle. And if we just wait, it takes in an x, y, and um, a width and a height. Or you can just put a width and a height. So we're just going to, but we're just going to put, um, 40 and we're gonna put 50 so we have at the position 0 0 and the width is 40 and 50 and we're just gonna call this rectangle 2 and we're just gonna put uh, this is at position 100 100 and we're gonna say it's, it's width is 100 100 creative right um, so uh, we can we can do certain things. So let's just say, let's say this is the player character, and you know what? I'm gonna put this at position 100, 100. 
So let's just let's say we get the rectangle around the player character, and we get the rectangle around um, um, the second rectangle. Or you know what? I'll I'll show you one thing that we can do. We can use texture region, and we can say get. Um, we can get the region's width or the region's height, so we can store it in our new rectangle and stuff like that. I thought there was a I thought there was a method, maybe that's in the sprite class. Uh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, so it's probably in the sprite class just to actually get the rectangle surrounding it. Um, but I'm just going to go back to what it was before. Whoa, how did that happen? But yeah, so we have two rectangular regions. Sorry if I confused you guys. We have two rectangular regions. Uh, one, let's say this is our player and this is our enemy. We want to see if they've collided or one's the enemy, one's like a box or something. We want to see if they collided with each other. So they're both at the position 100 and uh, one has a width of 40, one has a width of 100. So obviously they are touching. But so we can have a bunch of if and else statements to check if they're touching, or we can have uh, we can use one of the inbuilt methods. So we're gonna say okay, if rectangle contains if it contains this rectangle, so if it contains another rectangle, so if they are inside of each other or they're touching, then let's write touching and put else font draw not touching and let's run this program and it says not touching well that's kind of embarrassing because I thought it was going to say touching so let's see what is actually going on well that is well i just checked it and that's super embarrassing i accidentally gave you guys the wrong method so let me show you something so like i guess mistakes you can learn from your mistakes right um so i made a, a little mistake but let's is, watch this okay so as you can see this is touching but when we switch it around it says not touching now why does that happen well, I'm using the contains keyword, which I shouldn't have used. I should have used the intersects keyword, but this just checks to see if it contains it. So as you can see, the width is 40 by 50, and this one's 100 by 100. So although they're inside each other, this rectangle doesn't fully contain this rectangle, but this rectangle does fully contain this one. And so that's why it's true whenever we flip it. If we want to see if they're actually intersecting or touching, then we use the intersects method, sorry. Um, so we're gonna use the intersects method and we're gonna run this and we should get touching is equal to true. So voila, it says that they're touching and then, um, so yeah, we know that they're intersecting. So you can use that to do certain things like bounding boss collision. And later on when we get to like the 20th tutorial or so, we will, I will, be doing tutorials on bounty boss collision and rectangles will help us greatly with doing stuff like that so anyways that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and if you like like my facebook fan page follow me on twitter and add me on bbm and steam so bye for now